I will like to, uh, to start and introduce myself. I'm professor for social work theories and concepts, uh, social work management, and uh, in Germany all these theoretical aspects are very important because each agency, each in social work institution has in order to get money from the state, from the local authority, to create a concept, to create, could say, uh, theoretical uh, concept about uh, the institution, about the target groups, and so it's very important to have this kind of uh, discussion. And I will introduce you into this question about science, which is a, a, a big debate in Germany. Is social work a science or is it only applied science? Because uh, we had a tradition where, where, where social work students only had a four-year diploma. This changed now with the Bologna Agreement, so now we have bachelor, master, PhD. So, in, but it's, this means in the end there is not a very strong scientific approach, a strong research approach, which we now have to develop. And this is why I'm very interested in European social work, because this gives me an, uh, an impression of all different tendencies across uh, Europe and all theoretical uh, positions. And I would like to introduce you in, into this question. Social work, a scientific uh, discipline, uh, what is necessary Necessary to create a scientific understanding and how far social work across Europe has achieved, we could say, a kind of scientific standing. There are, if we talk about uh, science, usually there are three questions which we should discuss. And the, uh, the first question is about uh, the could say the problem from a meta theory, a scientific discipline has its own perspective and it makes a distinction to other disciplines. And the question is, has social work its own perspective or is the perspective maybe similar to sociology or psychology or political science or, or whatever? So a scientific discipline requires its own orientation. Does social work possess this specific object? The second question is about <coughs> the academic debate, if something is a science, if there is a, a perspective on something, there should be a scientific debate, especially a theoretical debate. There should be paradigms, there should be competition between theories and models, and so the question is, is there an adequate discourse of social work available? A lot, lot of people, they think, they think there is no real discourse because social work is so easy to handle. Uh, so we will have to look at the discourse, the discourses and uh, ask <coughs> what's going on. And the third question, which is maybe the most important uh, question, is about research. The question is, is there empirical research and especially this is especially a German question. Uh, is social work ready and willing to subje subject itself to the rigor of the scientific method? And there are a lot of tendencies, especially old, uh, <coughs> very old uh, traditions in, in social work, not to base social work on research but base it more on philosophical or pedagogical uh, ideas. And uh, so, especially in Germany, we are struggling with, with this. But more and more there is a, could say, uh, there is a deeper understanding of what is scientific research and uh, which is the perspective social work should take in this research area. So I would like to go through these three questions and try to give answers. Whenever you have a, a question, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm really happy to come into 
contact with you and to uh, communication. So the question is, what is science about? What is science? And of course, social work and uh, and science. Uh, what is the, the relationship? And uh, what what is? We could say the background of this debate. So the background is that there are a lot of scientists which are arguing that social work is nothing special, specific, but only it's a, it's a, it's dependent on different disciplines. For example, sociology, psychology, yeah, and all these kind of, uh, of things, and uh, it's a, an accumulation of different theories which, which people use when they are doing social work. Yeah? This is a very uh, common argument, not only in, in Germany. You will find this especially in uh, France. You could say in all continental. Uh, uh, countries and uh, so the, the argument is there is no uh, the, uh, social work is nothing specific it's dominated it by different disciplines and in, in, in Germany we could say there is a, 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 especially a tendency to not to develop social work too much because uh, if social work is a science and if social work does research, maybe social work is observed very, uh, very closely and maybe this will cause conflicts be between the scientific perspective and the practitioners. And usually practitioners, managers, they don't like to have scientific thinking in their organizations uh, because scientific thinking is always critical. And a lot of institutions in Germany, social work institutions, they don't like critic. They want to be valued, estimated. You are wonderful. Yeah? And you know in, in Germany and other countries, there is a lot of church in social work. So in Germany, around 60% of social work institutions are run by church uh, organization, Caritas, Diakonie, by uh, other, we could say, more ideological organizations. And they don't like to have a scientific perspective and uh, because they are stressing on the, mo on the motif, on the uh, motivation of, uh, of people. So in, there is not a very good environment in Germany to talk about a scientific perspective. But what is the what is science, and maybe why do we need uh, science even in social work? This is a, a quote from Luhmann, which is a system theoretician. The function of science is based on a reorganization of the possible, on a new combination and not on an illustration of the present. So, what sci science, we could say science is autonomous. It makes its own dis distinction and it tries to identify a perspective and start looking from this perspective and developing theories and things. So this is to say science is not something uh, like a servant which should serve the practice in order to achieve a goal, but science is something unique and it's about a perspective. So. Uh, the question will be, what is the perspective of social work science? Uh, often people think there is social work and in order to improve social work services we should have a science and science should help us to make things better. But this is naive, this is, uh, uh, this is not uh, the perspective of science because science is autonomous and, uh, and practice is autonomous of course and so we have to develop these uh, differently. What is the scientific question? The scientific question is not a practical question, but 
the scientist tries to explain what is going on, why the system operates in this way as it operates, what happens and what might happen. So it's, we could say it's a neutral question. It's not about how can we improve, how can we make the world better. M maybe there are at the end some ideas, but uh, this is not science. Science is trying to to make observations and to describe in order to find out new theories, new aspects, something which we not uh, expect. So the knowledge of a scientist is not aimed at a specific context. You have to do this in this and that way, but it's more uh, it's uh, it's neutral. It give, give, gives us alternative uh, approaches. And this is the problem, especially in, in our German debate, because uh, all practitioners, they would like to, to have guidance, they want to have solutions from... And if you look to England, a lot of social work, scientific research is done by national research institutions. And they try to do research, but in, but in the end, they tell people what to do. But this is not the role of science to tell people what they should do. But the, the, the question is to ask, to create theories, alternatives, to be critical against the uh, practice, and then to wait what practice will see, will do with this new uh, knowledge. Therefore, it's very important that social work is at the university as autonomous discipline and not maybe as in England in uh, the research is done by national organizations which are all paid by the state in order to make things better. Uh, okay, so the first question is that social work as academic discipline has its unique scientific perspective of its own. Does it make sense to talk about a, a social work uh, perspective? There is a, a, a book from Soydan, which is a Swedish uh, social work scientist. He's the director of the Institute uh, uh, for Evidence-Based Practice in, in Sweden. So some, the most famous Swedish scientist in social work. And his argument is that if there is a core concept in social work, we have to find it out in history, we have to look for the roots of social work, and his argument is that uh, there are some ideas, some there is a way of thinking which we can find in the 19th century in sociology, which could be identified as the origin of social work thinking. It is more than sociology, because it's not only the question how is society developed, but it's about how can we change society, how can we change uh, things. So he is looking for this criterion and the answer uh, of Soydan is that social work is derived from sociology and the core of social work is to have a theory of society of man. So it's about sociology, to have a program, a scheme for changing problematic situations and to have a group of people committed to carrying out this change. We could say it's, a, it's about intervention into society. How can we do intervention? Professional would mean in an analytic, in a, in a planned way. It's about interventions uh, uh, and uh, this is the core idea. In the 19th century, soci sociologists thought that the origin of social problems uh, are in the sickness of society. So there was a first social work theory. It's a sick society, so we social work has to change it. Nowadays, we would say there are lots of, or of origins of social problems. The problem of social work is uh, in which way we could create interventions in order to change social 
psychological, behavioral, etc. Uh, aspects. So it's about intervention, uh, social interventions, and uh, this is the core of social work. And so the challenge for social work is to create theories, mo models, methods which are able to change things, which are a combination of theories of social problems, theories of strategies, and theories of the professional uh, role within. So what we were saying about, uh, about blind people and professional or non-professional help, this is a typical social work uh, problem because how can we intervene best in order to help people to cope with their uh, problems. So we could say the, the core is it's about theories of social problems and the question in which way we are able to intervene into these problems to change things uh, to the better. So this is the, so the, the, the core of social work according to uh, Soidan, according we could say to the Nordic countries. And you know for the Nordic countries this is very very clear because in the Nordic states uh, social work has the function, the task to intervene into social situations, to make society better, a better place, yeah, to make uh, the interventions, uh, we could say, fruitful uh, and, and helpful. In the problem in other countries, as Germany is, uh, is social work important in, we could say, in a, in a as a function of the welfare state? And the answer would be in Germany yes and no. Partly social work is very uh, important, like in, in, in Sweden, but partly social work uh, is maybe uh, a problem because especially a conservative state don't want to have interventions into the social. So we are in Germany, we, we are uh, very unaware, is, is this okay or not? So often we talk about a semi-profession, it's a ha half a profession and a lot of our students they don't know oh, 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 what am I, I am a professional or or a non-professional yeah, because of this uh, problem. You see for a Nordic state uh, researcher this is not a problem because the task is to change uh, social problems to the better and so for Soidan it would be clear to say therefore we need research and therefore we need uh, we could say a, a science which is able to, to, to uh, do the research and to create results, to create evidence, etc. So, uh, of course, social work theories and social work is embedded into other sciences and is related with social policy, psychology, nowadays very much with econ economy, with law. Law plays a very big role in Germany because all social work services nowadays are based on the law. So you can find, uh, especially in Children and Youth Act, all services for families, children, young people are uh, written down and people are entitled to get the service. So. Uh, <coughs> So social work is, we could say, something new which is created out of different perspectives but it has its own uh, perspective and is not only a mixture of uh, these other things. So the first conclusion is social work has its own set of ideas and is able to make a clear distinction against other, di other disciplines. It focuses on the relationship between problems and interventions. That's the, the mixture. I, I did a lot of research with sociologists. And my colleague is a sociologist and, uh, and this is a, a, very, a very good cooperation because he knows a lot about how to do research in social situations, how to do sociological research. 
but he is not a social worker. So he, he would say, yes, let's find it out, let's make research, but he will not talk about solutions, about what to do, because this is might be the task of social work uh, research. You would like to ask something? Come on. Uh, I'd like to ask in this view, who is the author of uh, what are the social problems and what are the desirable uh, changes? Okay. Yeah, the, the, this is uh, this is this has to be debated within the theories. Yeah. So this is only a, the the fundamental perspective is intervention and problems. And now we will come into the theories, and they will try to explain uh, the these uh, combinations. Yeah. The authors of the theories are scientists. Yes. Yes. But the problem is, you, you know, maybe uh, now we will see there are pedagogues will say, I know, there will psychologists, they say, I know, yeah? I, I just want you to continue and if I don't get my answer. Okay, yeah, we will see, yeah. So we can say, this is the question. And now we will ask sociologists, do you have any answer? And they will say, no, because we only can explain. We will ask psychologists, they will say, yes, we can explain a little bit behavior maybe, but not, yeah? So uh, we, we need, uh, if you go back, we, we need a discipline which is able to, to create theories around this question. Yeah? But go on asking if, if I don't <laughs> go. So, so the question is, are there enough theories? about this combination and, uh, uh, and do these theories guarantee a sci an adequate scientific discourse? And there are lots of people that say social work is not uh, scientific because there is no discourse. There are only a few ideas, but uh, maybe they don't know the discourse. And if you want to go into the discourse, you shouldn't stay only national. Because a national discourse is very narrow, in Germany very, very narrow. Uh, there are a few big professors, they have a theory, and all students have to learn the, the theory. Yeah. But the, uh, usually, you know in former times, the big professors, they didn't read English. So they, did, they knew nothing about other countries. Yeah. So until the 80s in Germany, the, the whole debate was nationally focused. Yeah? It is Germany, German debate, German. Uh, we, we didn't look to England, we didn't look to France, uh, uh, nor uh, to, to the Czech Republic or, or whatever. Nobody did, because the old professors usually came from a philosophical understanding. They were philosoph philosophers. And usually they couldn't speak English, uh, and because they studied the old German uh, philosophy. So, uh, uh, are there theories, and is there a debate? And the answer is there are different types of theories. There is a, a huge communication. There are theories which cover all the three elements of Soidan. It's about society, it's about intervention, it's about profession. So theories which try to combine. There are other theories which we call models. They try to mix uh, theory and practice. They try to tell practice uh, what to do. Think about care management. Care management is a model, which a social work model, which tells us what to do. And there are professional theories, of course. They tell the profession what to do. Think about humans, right? Profession. Yeah? And there are uh, methods and techniques which, uh, which are on the market, which we use, which are discussed, uh, and which we think are able to, de uh, to help social work. So there, are, there is a mix, and I would like to, sh to shortly introduce you into the mix. Of course, there are reference theory, sociology, psychology, which help us to do to understand things. Yeah, if we go into the big theories across uh, with a, across social work, uh, 
big theories means uh, very philosophically based theories. There are the, the five theories which, which you will find in, in literature. The old ones, hermeneutical, empirical, critical, systemic and ecosocial uh, theories. Uh, nowadays, a very, in Germany, a very much tendency to systemic and ecosocial uh, theories. Uh, but I, I would uh, like to uh, explain this. All these theories are still relevant, but relevant for specific tasks, for specific areas uh, of social work. Uh, our tradition in Germany comes from the hermeneutical theory, and hermeneutical is about understanding. We try to understand the world, and uh, we try to understand what is help, in, in very natural uh, ways and uh, uh, this is we could say typical for the for the end of the 19th century how can we help people uh, and uh, give them guidance and support and the theory uh, tells us that help is something natural uh, it's natural to help it's we could say it's a human thing and uh, so there is not a big theory ne necessary how to legitimate help. It's something simple and uh, natural. If you want to help in this hermeneutic uh, way, the strategy is to observe people in need and then to try to make an interpretation of their situation. And in order to develop this interpretation, you need to have this personal relationship. So there was on the street someone standing and he, he was selling some, some he, I think he's homeless, and he's selling, selling a newspaper of the homeless. This is in all cities now in Europe, you can find this. So in a hermeneutic perspective, we would say, let's have a look at this person. Yeah? Let's look at his clothing and, and, and then think about what, is, what could be the problem of this person. Does the person look sad or... Yeah? And then we would say, don't take the money and give it to, to the person because you never know what the person will do. Try to talk to this person and say, hello, how are you? What are you doing? Where are you coming from? Yeah? So go into a relationship because it's a human being. It's not only a seller who, who wants to have two, uh, not euros, but <laughs> uh, crowns. Yeah? Uh, but try to understand, to look, to use love and understanding in a very natural way. And, uh, uh, and then talk with him. Maybe he will tell you what he would like to have, what, uh, what his problems are. And uh, so uh, in France you can see this way of helping very, very often because a lot of people in France, they, they don't want only to give money, they want to give attention to, to these people. And you can see people talking with homeless people on the street only to share to share a life and to uh, to give to give love and and uh, attention. Yeah, the practice. Of course, this is not very very scientific based, but you can find this practice uh, very much uh, working with young people, with handicapped people, with children. We would say yes. You have firstly to talk. You have to come into contact. You have to spend time. And, uh, and communicate, you have to give attention, appreciation uh, to, to, to the person. And then maybe the person will open up him or herself and will give. And so you can start very, very slowly, cautiously. So you know, of course, uh, this is, a, this is an, an, an old strategy which we partly ca uh, can use, but of course it's not a very scientific perspective. Which, because at the end of this talk with this person, maybe we don't really know what the person wants to have. But uh, you see, it's a it could say it, it's it's a, an attempt 
to value a person as a person, even someone who is uh, blind or handicapped or uh, poor, to value the person and then to help. So the old theory of the hermeneutic theory is you have to, to touch, we could say, the person and then to help the person to grow in a personal way, not only to give money or uh, resources. So it, it, it's very philosophical uh, based and maybe partly on, on the Christian understanding of, uh, of relationship. Uh, in Germany, a lot of social workers would tell you the first thing if you are going to help is to talk, to appreciate a person uh, and not to immediately help. We have a big de debate about so-called tables. The tables are shops for poor people and you can come in and get uh, a soup for free or you could get bananas for free, whatever. Uh, and, uh, and a lot of uh, volunteers now, they are collecting these things in order to, to give, it, give them to the poor people. And within social work there is a big argument about this. Is this okay? Should we only give people something? Without any contact, without any appreciation, only you tell me I'm poor, so you get it. Yeah? So you see this is a, a, a very interesting perspective. It's not enough to base, to develop a real scientific theory, but it's, uh, it's an important aspect uh, of, uh, of help. And if you go to to the critical theory, to, to Habermas and, and uh, all other people, you will say that the, the theory of, uh, of recognition is more and more something which we, which Axel Honneth, I don't know if you, which is a, a Frankfurt sociologist, a critical social, would tell us it's about recognition, how to recognize other people and not only to give someone uh, to Europe. So there are the critical theories. They come from the you know the the 60s in in especially in Germany in in, in the Czech Republic uh, in France from the students' revolution. Well, the argument is that uh, social work is part uh, of a capitalistic state. And social work has to be aware of the conflicts of this, these capitalist societies and has to help, but at the same time to change social conditions. So it's about bringing change into society. And you see the strategy is to expose the contradictions and inequalities within a social system. It's the, maybe the debate about poverty in a rich country. Uh, uh, and uh, so uh, the pro uh, we could say the, the emphasis is on empowerment, on solidarity uh, and on solidaric action. And this is something which was very, very important in the 60s. Maybe you know the happenings yeah, where we did something crazy in order to make people aware of, uh, of these contradictions. Nowadays, uh, in Germany, the, the social work is no longer very critical. Because all these institutions, they are depending uh, from the money from the state. They want to have money. This is more important than to be critical. Yeah? And whenever they start to be critical, the state will say, okay, you will not get any money. And of course, church organizations are very conservative. So there is a lack nowadays in this critical uh, approach, working maybe with homeless people, with uh, youth gangs, with prostitutions. There are some, uh, some very minor uh, uh, developments in, in Germany, but, uh, but in, in the end, uh, nowadays, uh, we, we are very conservative for uh, society. You know where the, the service orientation is very much more developed. So I, I would uh, have liked my students to be more <laughs> uh, in touch with critical understanding.
that often say are not because nobody nobody believes that we can change something. They all say that's life, such is society. The empirical analytical theories, they uh, try to develop a kind of technologies, technologies of change. How can we change uh, especially behavior of people by using especially psychological methods? Uh, the very big word nowadays, you see, is skill, skills and is training. So it's a very isolated perspective. How can we train you soft skills? How can we train you not to be aggressive? How can we tell you social skills? How, how, how? Uh, think about parent, parental uh, skills. So the idea is to focus on, on a very narrow perspective and uh, uh, not to expect change or uh, something uh, a very broad element but to offer the training programs. We, we have nowadays programs for all kind of clients, uh, you know especially uh, in the activating welfare state uh, for clients without a job. They all have to go to, through trainings, trainings, trainings. And even at the university we have a big debate because some colleagues are saying our students need more training. Yeah, they need training in soft skills, they need training in presentation skills, they need training in computer skills, they need training, training, training. Yeah. So if you look at uh, the hermeneutic approach, it's, we could say there is a concurrence between the two. Are we only people who have to train skills and to, uh, to, to function in society? Uh, but there is more and more this kind of understanding even in, in Germany. You know, because th these trainings are very easily to evaluate we can talk about efficiency, about cost, uh, about best prices, uh, uh, because of this very empirical, empirically oriented series. Systemic theory is, uh, we, we could say, is, is a development which uh, shows us that social work uh, goes more and more towards middle class. So there are more and more problems in, uh, in, in, in the society which are no longer problems of poverty or hunger or whatever, but problems, uh, typical middle class uh, problems, problems of divorce maybe, family problems, uh, uh, problems with, uh, with the own life, the perspective of life, uh, with problems with a job, stress, yeah, work stress and so on. So uh, it's a problems which we don't have a, a clear solution, problems which must be solved by the clients themselves. If you don't know what to do, you feel stressed and are not happy to live, we can't tell you what's the solution, you will have to find it out. And you see, uh, system theory is of course a basis uh, because we can try to irritate people to uh, do non-directive intervention in order to help people to find uh, solutions and uh, to find their own uh, way. Uh, out of a crisis, out of a problem, uh, to solve uh, the problem, etc. Uh, in Germany now very, very important because people believe in these methods, in these intervention methods. They like these methods because they are very, uh, we say, very, they are indirective, they are not too strong, and uh, so I would say in, in Germany 20% of social workers, they have systemic knowledge, they learn systemic therapies and they use these therapies in group work and uh, in, 
uh, especially in family work, uh, when when there are problems with children and families and partners and so. <clears throat> And, of course, the systemic theory gives us an introduction or an impression of the complexity of problems. Whenever there is a problem, one problem, there is a system behind which creates the problem, which stabilizes the problem. So whenever we change something, maybe uh, the problem changes. Uh, and of course you can see we as social worker we don't want to be responsible for the solution find your solution I only help you to so go back there is another which is uh, more a resource oriented theory eco-social theory is about pers person in context maybe you know Bronfen Brenner and other uh, theoreticians which have developed these, uh, the, the theory. So we look more on resources, on environments, and try to create an, in a, a better environment in order to, uh, to solve the problem. The big term of case management, care management is part of this story and uh, it has a lot to do with autonomy in, in modern states. Uh, you know, uh, older people in clinical social work, the problem is always with older people. Should we change the environment yeah? or can we try to stabilize the environment? Go into a home uh, or change the, the, the environment by uh, different resources or by competences. In, in Germany, especially clinical social work, has more and more the problem. People are, old people are in the clinic, but they should go home, they should go out of the clinic. It costs too much, but nobody knows where to go because they can't go back into their apartments, into their the flats, because they, they are not uh, stabilized enough. And they can't get into a home because there is not enough money. Huh? So, uh, in Eichstätt, where I come from, you could talk to the hospital social worker. The whole day he is, he is uh, uh, talking about resources, about what could he do in order to have people uh, at home. So, the equal. These are the big so, uh, uh, theories and uh, which try to explain the whole three elements, a theory of society and social problems, a theory of intervention, and a theory of the professional role. Yes, maybe one, one more word to the, uh, to the, okay. To the eco-social theory, a, a, a very modern term nowadays is coach, coaching. Yeah? So social workers are like coaches who try to, to manage and to coach people so that they can solve their problems. Yeah, models are derived from theories. But they get a little bit from practice uh, theories. Uh, models try to shape the doing of social work. They try to shape the, pro the production and give us a perspective. I will shortly tell you about the, these. Hopla. So about these. Hmm? Uh, the, the five elements, only to show you that there is debate, there is something about crisis intervention, ca case management, community, anti-discriminatory uh, perspective and empowerment. And you will see, if you don't know something about the th big theories, you will not understand the models, because the models are b partly based on the theories. Crisis intervention, it's only to show you how different theories come in, 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 into a model. Assess risk and safety of clients and others. This is an eco-social perspective. Establish report communication. This is a hermeneutical uh, perspective. Identify major problems. This is analytical. You should have a pattern of, of problems. Deal with feelings. Pro provide support. It's again the hermeneutic 
position and explore possible alternatives. This is a systemic idea, not to focus on one problem, formulate an action plan and provide follow-up support. So, we could say this is a model developed by robots which is using the different theories in order to get a strategy, a concept through uh, a crisis. And now we could do research about these uh, steps. We could uh, try to implement, to change and to look for this model. Task-centered social work is very much uh, from the empirical perspective, explore problems and agreeing a goal would mean uh, don't talk about the problem too much but the, the aim, the goal, the solution. Written ac agreement, you see there are theories uh, which come from law. We should make an agreement why maybe the client will stick to this paper otherwise maybe not yeah so uh, and we will plan and then we will uh, stop the term uh, this if you you would have told us this model in the 70s people would say you are crazy this is not a way to help people yeah we should change the world and we should talk to all together, but not in this way. Nowadays, this is a very, very uh, common uh, strategy. So, come on in, what is your problem? That, uh, it's, it, it's a model for a, for a society where there is no time. So it's, it's, it's like with PhD students. Come in, what is your problem? Yeah? It's your, your timetable. What is your problem? Okay. Yeah. What would you like to do? Okay, go home and do the task and come again. And so, uh, it's only you see, if you want to do this and to develop, you have to be aware of the theoretical constructions behind. Behavioral social work is clear. You have to focus on behavior and have to find clear uh, responses to encourage people in order to do this and then to demonstrate competent performance. So if you are too shy to present something, you will have to, to identify the problems, then you have to learn and then you will be able to do it. Uh, more and more we have uh, this kind of behavioral social work, uh, especially uh, in the area of child abuse. We have more and more programs for people who have abused children. So they have to learn how to behave in a very strict way. Otherwise, they will have to stay in, in prison uh, for, forever. Yeah, case care management, you know, it comes from the resource oriented uh, approach, it comes from systemic approach, and <clears throat> The social worker has different functions adv as advocate, as broker, as gatekeeper and uh, within this case management there are different steps, assessment, planning and, uh, and so on and so on. And uh, if, if it would be very interesting to look at case management across Europe because you could see that there is always the same construction but there are partly different problems, different steps in order to set this in, uh, into place and uh, okay we in Germany have more systemic case management models but we have as well resource oriented so eco-social uh, models which, which are more with, uh, with resources uh, <coughs> Yes, of course, social and community development. Uh, this is more from sociology, where we take some theories. It's about self-actualization, make people aware of their problem. It's about collectivist strategies, do together, not one uh, person alone. Collectivist strategy and uh, and uh, populist strategies, so go into the public, uh, make people aware and uh, don't focus too much on uh, personal activities, but focus on 
local communities. So there are lots of these kind of theories, you, you, you know this, and there is a very important uh, other model which is anti-discriminatory, anti-oppressive practice, uh, and there are some things which you can well uh, bring closer to the critical theory. It's about how can we uh, establish human rights, how can we uh, avoid discrimination in social work, and uh, uh, more and more we have conflicts between the different approaches, which is very good because we have a debate, we have paradigms, uh, because what we were saying about people with disabilities, we had long ago we had this hermeneutical approach, help these people communicate, understand, and nowadays we have a more inclusive approach to say respect these people. Yeah, you know the European Championship was on respect. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so don't go too close to other people, respect their identity, respect their individuality. So these are a few models. Empowerment, you know the, the, the term, and there are lots of uh, different understandings, but it's always, empowerment always means give the power to the client, make the a client aware of, of power and don't uh, uh, try to solve the problem for the client. Yeah, very shortly there are professional theories uh, in, in, in Germany. Maybe this is not too interesting for you. There is, it's about is social worker an interpretator? So should he use qualitative methods, case studies, in order to make interpretations? We have some universities who are very strongly focused and all students have to learn the qualitative approach in sociology in order to, to be interpretator of life situations. There is a, a, a tendency, social worker, a servant. There is a, a, the service culture. Even in our university, we have some economy which tell us social work is, uh, is typical service. We don't need any other theories. We have service theories and should use them. You know, Paulo Freire, agent of change, the critical understanding. There is the postmodern understanding, uh, which is a more systemic understanding. And there are social workers, uh, they try to uh, to develop a self-understanding as systemic therapeutes. This is due to the fact that if you want, if you have psychological problems, you can go to a therapist, which will be very, very expensive. And so uh, we have more and more these so-called systemic therapists, which are much cheaper and uh, uh, which are much more solution focused, not pro problem focused. And within a, you know, within a middle class social work, uh, there is more and more a need for this kind of help with stress, help with partner conflicts and all these kind of things. Acting theories, I will not go to this, and you need about the, the methods. This is where the, our reference disciplines play a big role, especially sociology. What about network theories, social planning, the, all the empirical uh, techniques or political methods? Our students usually are not aware that if they want to to go into policy as social worker, they should be they should know the methods and how to use these these methods. Uh, think about didactics, about consultancies, communication. So there is a lot of things to do. But these are not social work theories, but these are methods from a different culture, psychology, which we take in and maybe we should do research about how do social workers use these kind of methods, in which way, and uh, how could we make best use of these methods in social work. Because it's a difference if you make a feedback as a therapist or 
as a social worker. Yeah? So our students should be aware of all these theories around, even if they are not uh, social work theories. For my part, there is clear evidence social work has enough theories and models to establish a broad academic discourse. So it's very easy to can go in, it, in every country to say we will easily find a, a discourse, we will find uh, models, theories, arguments which we could share and discuss and maybe uh, research. So there is enough, there is a very, very broad uh, communication in, in, in the scientific community uh, and we should be more aware of, of these uh, uh, things. Uh, the first semester uh, for, uh, for my students usually I only teach them social work vocabulary. Yeah? So they have to understand vocabulary and to say, uh, 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 for, uh, for example, this is uh, partly uh, if you think about double mandate. Yeah? This is a vocabulary which someone should should know uh, uh, as a social worker because, or, or case management or, or whatever. So to have the vocabulary and to know this is what we are talking about and later we try to explain the, the theories which which come. So, very last question, is social work ready and willing to sub subject itself under the rigor of the scientific method? This is important for Germany because the old tradition, the hermeneutic and critical tradition, they don't want to do this. And you know about the positivism struggle in Germany, usually even sociologists, they didn't want to use empirical methods. Because they were saying, this is a kind of alienation, this is only data, this, this is uh, not, 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 not the right way. So the question is, do we want to do this in a proper way as science or not? In Germany there is a, a lack of interest because uh, you know 80% of services are organized by non-governmental organizations. They don't want to have research. They only want uh, to get applause. They want to be good. Yeah? They want to be wonderful. They don't want to have research. They, f they don't want to have academics. Uh, the six big charitables from the churches, worker unions, and so, uh, <clears throat> yes, their self-understanding is based partly on altruism. Yeah? It's like a, a, they protect themselves. They want to do something good. Yeah? Whenever you would say, but this is not a good way. We did our best. Yeah? You can, you shouldn't complain. We, we try our best. So there is a, this is a big industry nowadays which, uh, which is not interested in, in uh, criticism. And you see, the problem is uh, between science and practice. Practice wants to have procedures. Practice wants to have efficiency. Practice wants to have solution and technologies. This is what they want to have. But we, on the scientific perspective, uh, we can't give them this, these results. We have to make debates about truth and untruth. We have to autonomously work on knowledge. So we have to, uh, our own way and uh, theories and, and technology are aims to create a the theory is the aim not to create a solution. And so there is a, a, a very broad misunderstanding and the solution will be on the long run for me that uh, as well in, in uh, universities as in the organizations are academics which are able to communicate. Because if you don't have academics in practice, you can't communicate with these uh, people. 
And I'm always saying uh, to my students, uh, because we are in the south of Germany, there is the car, uh, the, the car industry, very big Audi, BMW. Uh, and next to us is a university where there are uh, engineers. And whenever an engineer comes to, the, to this university uh, as a new professor, within two weeks he will get a phone call from BMW. And someone will ask you, what are you doing? We are the big car. Could you make research in order to discuss with us problems? If you, if I as a social work professor come to the university, nobody will give me a phone call. <laughs> the Caritas. Yeah? Or a city. They will say, oh, you don't know what they are doing. These professors in social work, in sociology, in politics, you don't know. They are critical. So we shouldn't get too much in touch with them. So often practice doesn't know what to do with science. Because they know there are, they will not give us a solution. Okay. But they don't want to have critics or reflection. So there is a, a big thing, but uh, we could say the tendency nowadays in Europe is towards evidence-based practice. We could say is towards research in social work and I shortly will tell you why. Why is this more and more the debate? Because there is a new need for evidence in uh, even in, in the social sector because uh, of course because of the lot of money we spend and the first uh, perspective is legitimate more and more the political leaders have to legitimize, legitimize their decisions. So there is more and more a need to give reason why do we do and in, in Germany there is a big debate about a cash for care concept for children. Parents shouldn't give their children into care and so they will get money instead because this is cheaper for the state. And there was a big debate about the legitimization. Does this make sense? And there is research in, in Norway, in Sweden, which tell us this make, it makes no sense to give people money for care because they will not take the money for their children, they will take the money for themselves and maybe children will have no profit. So more and more our political leader, they need legitimization and uh, research can give ideas. There is another aspect uh, is responsibility. More and more we are aware that it's all decisions made in a modern state are about responsibility and uh, Gardner, this is a, a university professor at Harvard, has created the Good Work Project and he is saying if you want to do good work you have to guarantee the three S. The first S is excellence. So, whenever someone does something in a modern society, it should be excellent in a technical way, otherwise we will not pay. The second is engagement. People should be meaningfully involved what they are doing. They should be motivated. And the third thing is ethical. Behaving responsibly in their world as a worker. So, it's not enough, we could say, to do something engaged as German social worker are doing things. It's not enough to do something excellent and it's not enough to do it only ethical. But you have to combine, so in a modern society we have to create a new construction of, of responsibility and which means that research and scientific thinking uh, is a very important aspect. And the th third need is accountability. We want to know why. Why did you do this and not another thing? Accountability uh, in Germany is more and more in child protection because a child protector can, can't explain why they did this. And there is a, a European coalition for corporate justice uh, which 
tries to develop rules for corporations which uh, and strengthening product responsibility and we could say in social work a service is a product and the organization is responsible for the product huh? so if we want to to uh, be responsible even as Caritas, even as Diaconie, we have to, uh, to to do more for this and so it's uh, it's about we could say uh, the, the role of knowledge is more and more important not only in technology but even in social work in all areas of the society and th this tells us something about knowledge uh, the problem of knowledge is that it's more and more dependent on the channels because on, on, on the sources of knowledge this is a th theory from Lyotard from a French uh, sociologist or, or philosopher uh, it's about knowledge we have to, more and more to deal with knowledge and uh, not only in the technical areas but as well in social work knowledge will be more and more produced it will be more produced to be sold and uh, there will be more and more uh, competition between these people creating knowledge and so the, the argument is if social work wants to play a role in this modern society it has to deal more with knowledge and if it wants to deal with knowledge it has to to use the, the channels of knowledge it has to, cr to create uh, not, not only as personal knowledge but we could say as knowledge which, which can be collected which can be disseminated which can be developed so there is a huge lack we could say uh, of use of, of knowledge and social work uh, will have to learn uh, about this so uh, very uh, shortly uh, what can we learn from evidence-based practice a short look into med medicine you know uh, the medical sector is more and more important uh, we have in Germany now a law that medical doctors are obliged to make a very careful documentation and to guarantee that each client gets the best service concerning the state of the art of medicine yeah so huge emphasis and uh, and so the doctors are really forced to create an evidence-based medicine but what do we know about the because uh, the quality of the medical sector we know that physicians still most often use consulted textbook books which frequently were out of date so you go to a doctor maybe he is on the state of the art of 1980 huh? he, he, he doesn't know more than that because this was when he studied the advice from colleague is often inaccurate so this is research and physicians are not able to read systematic reviews they believe that the lack of evidence was equivalent to the treatment being ineffective so even medical doctors are not able to deal with scientific results to understand scientific research uh, and to we could say to hold up with the development of science so, uh, this is the lesson from medicine and now we could go into social work area and maybe we could say maybe it's the same the knowledge of social workers is very old yeah it's based on the textbooks of 1960 or 1980 and you see that now the challenge is not only in medicine but uh, as well in social work how can we uh, with that lift up the level of knowledge in in social work and uh, of course the an the answer is through research 
and we should tell the practice is the research results valid relevance so we should we should we could say organize research results and tell them uh, about readability are people able to read and what do we tell these uh, practitioners and are they able to understand and maybe to implement so the lesson from 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 med medicine tells us social work has to because to strengthen research and has to strengthen uh, the level of knowledge of research of uh, of the of the social worker and this is a kind of solution. This means that scientists and practitioners should be able to identify scientific argumentations as language games. So they should be able to read the game, to understand the big terms, to understand the data. Uh, they should be able to read, understand the games and make their own well-grounded statements and decisions. And they sh should be aware of the fact that antagonists between different games are the founding pr principles for new games. So my argument is, if we want to develop social work further, we have to develop a scientific understanding in social work. And we have to ma make both practitioners and scientists uh, able and aware of of the problems and especially able to read and uh, and discuss uh, these research results as long as we are not able to do this as long as most of the social worker have a bachelor degree they will be not able because uh, to really use uh, use the, the knowledge and uh, and we will ha always have this tension between practitioner here and scientists on, on, on the other side. So, in the end I would say social work across Europe is on the pathway to give more and more priority to research. So we need students, especially PhD students, to do this. Especially the Bologna reform with its three levels will strengthen the research base of social work. And this is what, what we should do in, in, in future. We could say to, and then to go more into, into institution and, and practice with these high level academics in order to, to create a, a could say to create a communication between practice and science or university and institution which which is really uh, on the top of of the discussions and uh, and helps us to to uh, develop social work further so this is of course a german perspective uh, but uh, uh, because there is no other way in a in a modern society as to go through science research and to, and to try to to create a communication uh, which is based on, on on these aspects. Okay, thank you. And maybe now you, you ask the questions, which I didn't give you an answer before. Because uh, through the, from the model you introduced, I was 
somehow missing the view from the clients or from the people who are concerned by the interventions. That's why I asked on the beginning when we talk about social problems and interventions and professionals, who is the one defining what is the social problem? I guess that the professional, the scientist and the client, they, they are all to define the social problem differently. Yeah, yeah. And this is up to research to ask what does this, the person want? Yeah? The, the, so we need the different aspects. Yeah? But each of the three partners, client, professionals, scientists, uh, should be able to understand the methods and the argumentations of the other side. So if you are a practitioner, you should understand. This is a critic of what you are saying. We think, we, the, a professional is us, usually thinking he knows what the client needs. So the message from science could be, you don't know what, yeah? So the, the science uh, uh, brings us new ideas, new aspects in order to change perspectives. But practically, I ask myself or question yeah? here, how often the people who are in the very high level in, in science, yeah. uh, if they are practically able to talk to people, there, 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 there is a famous uh, research book, and the title is from uh, scientists, The Client Speaks. This was in, in the 70s, uh, where firstly sociologists tried to listen to clients. So this is the, the task of, of, of scientists to ask. Yeah, and, and, and then we, the practice could say, ah? Oh, this is a message from research, client don't want to have, so the, the practice could react, yeah? So the idea is you need all the three. Yeah, but this is, the, yeah, this is the problem if social work is not an autonomous discipline, yeah? Because if you are autonomous as a department, okay, you are. So you, Libro can make a decision. We will make research on, yeah, he can tell you, PhD, you will have to talk to clients. This is, yeah? If science is independent. If you look now, now look into different countries. In England, the scientific, social work science is often not independent because the government pays, yeah? They will not ask what client wants to, want to have. Yeah? So the argument is the more you have an autonomous discipline, the more you get, we could say, an open dialogue. But of course you need departments, you need, you need money, but you shouldn't expect practice to pay for, uh, for these kind of independent research because the practice usually don't want to know these critical questions. Oh? Yeah, I don't want to take the space. No, no. no. <laughs> I think uh, that that's a kind of uh, unique uh, art of social work or scientists and social work even when uh, government pay us to make uh, research to, to get, uh, make a dialogue or mm -hmm. interview with uh, government or But the, the precondition is that social work is accepted as an autonomous discipline. You know, because otherwise you will get, <laughs> no, get, get no money for a department, get no money for research. And this is different in different countries. If you look into the Nordic state, we say they, they are very autonomous at the university, social work as a science. If you look to England, they are very depending on the state. 
with research because the state wants to manage. In Czechia I don't know who, who will tell you or are you independent. In, in Germany it will always be a, a problem of, uh, of course, it, it's not, uh, the pro big problem is not money, the big problem is, is usually that, uh, that the organizations will always attract you with money and tell you, if you will do this, I will give you money. So you should be strong and say, no, I don't want to have this money. Because they will use them for evaluation, for, uh, yeah, for what, what they want to do. Uh, and so the, we could say social work ha as a scientific discipline has to be aware of these conflicts and of knowledge production and of course find ways to uh, to do research in areas where nobody is really but uh, knowledge which, which makes sense or which is useful for for the development but the, or, or what i'm saying is always practice you should always be cautious with practice because they have their interests <laughs> They want you to do research in their own. I have to react to this because it yeah. seems to me that you, uh, by this support, this division between science and practice, yeah. as if it was two forms which should stay yeah. apart. And maybe that's exactly from, from my view the problem I would not have a social work as a science and not enough science in, in practice. Because if we as a scientist would say, yeah, we have our own world of, of theories and objective look, and you practice. problem is what is the solution of this division the division is correct it's depending on interest there are different interests of practice which is normal yeah a practitioner wants to have solutions and a, a scientist wants to have wonderful theories yeah My position is a little bit uh, more skeptic. If you have a scientific perspective, that's totally different to a practical perspective. Okay? You can't mix it up. I think uh, But, okay, go on. I think the role of research and social work is to interpret the facts that yes. are a result of yes. the research. Because when you interpret it with language, it can be very useful for what it does. It's up to, yes, but it's up to a practitioner to make it his interpretation. The problem is, is he able to, she or he, and the solution is a practitioner should know a little bit about academic discourse as well as maybe a researcher should know a little bit about. But, in, but, in, but nobody can do the job of the other side. Practitioners have to make their interpretations and researchers have to make their observation and sometimes this will be productive and sometimes <laughs> people will be frustrated yeah? 
This is, yeah, it's like in uh, the medical area is a good example because doctors should be able to, to, to read research results because they are changing from time to time. They should be able to make their own interpretation so, and, uh, and researchers should be able to, to see what is going on. But it's not, we could say, it's not a, a very simple relationship. We do together and change the world, but it's different aspects and different interpretations in order to, uh, to create knowledge and see what will be the outcome. Okay. The codes are, but the codes are different. Uh, research is not looking for solutions usually. The, this would be a mixture. Yeah, the research is looking for truth. Yeah, of course. Put the question about the current state of things, not about the future. What you will do? You must research the current state. So that you are able to. always in we have these PhD course some springs course in April in Ostrava with PhD students and they come and tell tell us their project how can we improve the situation of blind people in huh? as a PhD piece of work and you will the answer will be this is not a research question yeah this is not a research question. This is the problem. You have to stick to the rules of science. What is possible? You have to restrict your question. Maybe to a specific element. What do clients think is best? Yeah? This is, uh, and of course this is, a, if you go and do research in this way, this, the, the result will be very interesting for practice. Ah, now we know what these, but the solution, what will practice or what will political leaders do with this message? This is maybe up to the political leaders. Yeah? So as a researcher you will always have to restrict yourself to uh, methodologically restrict yourself to the rules of research. Of course you can say, now I did the research, my personal meaning is we should, yeah? But in Germany we have a, a very uh, big debate about that, uh, that researchers don't make the distinction between results, what, what was my research result, and what do I recommend to a political party. Yeah? And, and so we have to stick uh, to this, and, but this doesn't mean that science is better than practice. Yeah? Or practice is better than, but it's different uh, way of using knowledge and creating knowledge, and we have to respect this. And as a PhD student, you have to <laughs> to find the, the the point, the methodological point where you could say yes, this is it's still a scientific enterprise. It's not a practical question which or uh, uh, where I have to hurt the rules of maybe empirical uh, research. But I know this is a, in social work this is a difficult question. 
but because we don't want to solve the question, people don't accept social work as academic discipline. Yeah? As long as social work researcher uh, tell us what to do, yeah, we will have to tell them this is not uh, this is not acceptable because researchers tell us what is, uh, what's going on, what is observable, uh, what could, but they don't tell us what to do. This is the here is the border of yeah. You are. We had a, a big research project in Munich. It was about the development of social, uh, of the whole social services in Munich. And my colleague, a sociologist, and I, we were the. It was action research or applied research, and we were the academic representatives. But uh, and there were a lot of politicians, social work institutions, yeah, round table, big round table, and but we always try to tell people that as academics. We are interested in good services. We want to help the world. But as academics, our role is more to create knowledge, to create data. Yeah? And if the people have a, a specific question, to try to answer the question with data. Yeah? But not to be mu too much involved into the strategy of the city of Munich. Yeah? As soon as, uh, what should we do? We, want, we would say, okay, this is a problem of the city of Munich. And we, are, we don't have the experience to, to, we have the experience to collect data, to develop questions, yeah? And, and in Germany you will often, in, in, in the, in the, on the TV, you have all the experts uh, and they tell you what to do. And the, but mostly it's their personal opinion. It's not based on research. And we as researchers or scientists, we should always is a tell people, this is what I can say correctly. And this is maybe my opinion, my ideological perspective. I hope that they do. If 
they are able to distinguish these two, uh, these two views. They are, in fact, uh, researchers in practice in some way. They yeah. ask what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I see how I can do this or this or this or ask for some recommendation or something like that. So I think that the, 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 where, where both sides keep this rule, and not only this, there are many rules yeah. this time, then they can, uh, can uh, understand each other and, uh, and work, uh, work yeah. together. And the distinction, the distinction between the research is, and practice is still here, but it is not a distinction between the researchers and uh, yeah. practitioners. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. And I think your, your, your example with, uh, with uh, medical doctors uh, is, is uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We, we have similar uh, things in uh, with uh, with the quality officer of a of a company. The quality officer should make evaluations. Yeah, he should create data. He should look where are people unhappy, unsatisfied. Uh, yeah, he is for the data. He is more uh, with a an objective. Uh, makes objective assessments, uh, but it's up to the management to make the conclusion, to say, yes, if it, these are the problems we have to do. The the quality of officer will not say, will not say, I saw this and we should do that. He would make a, a comma and say, this is what I saw. This is the data. This is what tells us research. Okay, and now you, management, you will have to make a decision. Is, it, is this important? Shall we do something? Yeah. This is not uh, up to the person who makes the data. And in, in Germany, I don't know the word in, in English, we talk about epistemological, uh, estim epistemological jump. You jump into another sphere, which is not correct in, in, uh, in scientific. Okay. Yeah, I, I can say that I also, with what I was suggesting, I agree with this, and I think that people now relate to it very well because in the case of master students, for example, the scientist and the researcher is one person, and then it's a difficult thing to handle it somehow. I think it's a big advantage when a person can work in a practice and do also research, but it's difficult, it's the biggest challenge, I think. Yeah. tell my, st my students you can be personal and give advice in the first chapter in the introduction and in the conclusion you can tell me whatever you want <laughs> but as you were saying the middle the middle part of your dissertation should be objective your perspective you use the methods of scientific uh, research and get a clear result and of course I will not uh, uh, hinder you to to draw a conclusion because you are you, you know about the situation you can do this but, but the middle part the most important part is and it's for me it's because of the language games but maybe this very German our students they don't know the, these language games and they should learn the language game of science yeah? and not start with a kind of mixed language a little bit practice science theory yeah so they should learn this is how a researcher is 
developing. Yeah? But you are right uh, there, of course, uh, people should, we could say, sh should give a statement, of course, why not? But they should tell, this is now, this is the result, and this is my statement. And, and uh, too often in social work, people don't want to do this, so they mix it up. And, but it's, it's similar nowadays in economy. The, the big bank crisis, yeah, they, and we asked the economists, could you please analyze the bank, the bank crisis? And they start with their personal opinion, yeah? and we would like to have data. We would like to have theories about how a bank goes bankrupt. <laughs> okay, yeah. Thank you very much for... If I can finish your lecture by one by one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Idea, and I think that what the important is, is the content of what, what is the message of, of the lecture that you have to try to ask, to, 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 to uh, play these, these games on making research, taking data, maybe it's uh, all their application, like to do this as a researchers or as a practitioners, in those cases we should know theories to have a concept yeah. to describe yeah. and to be able to control the, the description. That's, that's the basic rule of the, of, of the game. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, we, when, we, when we know theories, when we know several of theories and are able to identify what's going on in specific cases, then we are, 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 are able to distinguish and to play. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Libo. Thank you. <laughs>